welcome. Um, so glad to see everyone here. We've got, um, looks like the possibility of some rain coming and the weather's warming up a little bit. So we, we're looking towards spring. It never seems to come as fast as I would like it. We have started the first Sunday of Lent, and you can see that Gail has worked on decorating some things up. And uh, we've also got some booklets back there, the new, uh, new Daily Breads are there, and there are some companion booklets that are there that you can, you can look at if you want something to read that gets you in the mood to, uh, to focus on the Lord. Um, the theme today, it's really a title, because you won't, you won't really see it in scriptures unless you look hard, is Walk a Mile. So you can think about walking, and, and it goes along more with Lent than it does with our uh, scriptures. By the way, speaking of walking, if you exercise or walk in any way, keep track of that. We're going to try to head for Jerusalem again. Um, last year we didn't make it. So we need everybody participating. We may cheat a little bit and, uh, and fly somewhere to start off with. But we were starting from, um, I can't remember what the Tuscan or some town, maybe it was Lincoln, Kansas. And we figured the miles by air and we were going to walk that. See if we could come up with that number of miles. We didn't quite make it last year. So we'll see what we do this year. But keep track of them and I'll tell you what our goal is. I want to work with Kay. Uh, she has been feeling a little under the weather lately, so. Anyway, um, you can see the rest of the announcements on the back. Do you have any announcements? Any birthdays and anniversaries?
spend some time talking to him in the deepest parts of our hearts. So open up your heart to God and let him in. He's here. He's around us. He loves you. He wants to talk with you. And so let's set aside our other things that distract us. Lay aside grudges and um, any of the things that would distract us. Any of the things that would fill our heart rather than the joy of the Lord. So let's talk to God for a few moments. And be thankful for the good things he's given you. Well, God, we worship you and we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you that you fill us with joy and peace and with the fruit of the Spirit. And I pray that we might display that as you show your goodness to us. We thank you for um, the promise of spring. We thank you for the season of Lent. And we ask that you would guide us during this time. Now, guide us as we read your scriptures and as we sing your songs. Help us to be guided by your Holy Spirit throughout this service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our psalm is 32. And, of course, part of what we have during Lent is the uh, examination time. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all you who are faithful offer prayer to you. In a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with a bit and a bridle else it will not stay near you. Sounds like you know some of us pretty well. Many, of the, many are the torments of the wicked, but a steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Amen. Our next song is found in your... Um, Bulletin. He's got the whole world in his hands. And boy, we say this in grade school. So, I know this one. <laughs>
beginning and that Janet is agreeing to read for us today.
the scripture that she read explains our, our sinful nature, but yet how Jesus came to save us from that. It's at this time we have our joys and concerns. Does anyone have anything in mind that they would like us to pray about? Uh, I, I have two things I'd like to pray for myself. I ain't going to make the right decisions on that thing. And also what I'd like to pray about me when, when I go out and you go out too and deliver these daily breads to people up there. There's some, there's a lady in this town that killed her husband and she went to prison in this town. We have some others up here Jim and Carol Murphy that have been disappointed in churches, and I think that we all need to be praying, praying even when I take out that I can be doing something like you can too with those people up there that have said all this stuff. Yes, so a lot of things to cover there. Let's pray first of all for your complete plumbing system, your septic system and everything, and, and pray for that <coughs> to be fixed and paid for and done right. Um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And then for those in this town that we're reaching out to and using things like daily bread, so there's uh, actually the little gospel message in our bulletin, uh, but try to get the word out to those who, uh, who maybe have been disappointed in churches and don't go to a church but are interested in God. And we want to get the message out to them and appreciate you and making sure we get those booklets. Um, so let's pray for those that we get the book us out to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And then for the jail ministry, which is in Minneapolis, but yet reaches throughout the United States, because many of the people there, most of the people there are not from Ottawa County, but from Salina, Wichita, and then all over, really. We get everybody from New York, California, um, Texas, a lot of people uh, end up there, one way or another. So, let's pray that God's Word, as we give it in Bibles and in, uh, in our bulletins and also in, the, in the daily breads and other literature, let's pray that that speaks to their heart and changes them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Anything else that comes to mind? Joel McCosh. Joel McCosh, yes. Uh, any update on is he? That they were worried about his camp was the last time. He, he is home. He's um, home walking with a cane. Oh, thank you. Yeah, right. they're still going to uh, watch his wrist and see how it feels. It's not like that. Good. Is it good? <clears throat> yeah. He, uh, very much. In my mind, he's young. Yeah. But sometimes when I think he's young, he's like 50. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's still pretty young, so he has a good chance of healing up if they can get it set right. And he had his own mom, my and so, you know, he was doing what he was supposed to. The other guy just didn't see him. Yeah, boy, good, he's a, that's a good family. <coughs> I'm sure don't want anything bad to happen to Joel. Um, so, thankful that he's at home, and his wrist is... They think maybe healing, but they're going to have, may have to go back in and do surgery. So let's give thanks. Let's do a prayer and a praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our thanks and prayers. Pray for, keep praying for uh, Jan. Um, seen her a couple of times uh, lately. Seems to be adjusting, adjusting well and has, has plans, and so let's pray for, for Jen that uh, healing will continue to take place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. some pictures. They went to, a, to Arabia just to get away from it. They, they went to a place in, in Arabia, one of the Oman, one of the little uh, countries there. But, so it was a great time, no crowds. Which uh, in India, the crowds are everywhere it seems. So they uh, really enjoyed that. But got back safely and 
don't take that for granted, uh, for sure. So, uh, for my family's safety, safe travel home, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you. I think it's um, time to pray for a rain. It's after the ground thawed out, it was a lot of places to dry on top. So, probably for the wheat and for the, the pastures and everything, we need a little rain. So, let's pray for a good rain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All right, well, if there's no other prayers uh, or concerns, I know you've got some in your heart that you uh, pray for. And some may come to mind during the service, but I hope you're talking to God all the time during the service and open to what He has for us. Um, so let's sing our prayer song, and then we'll have the prayer after that, so that you can talk to God. Um, it's found in your hymn book, 352, Standing in the Need of Prayer. <laughs> God, we worship you and we praise your name and we thank you for how you've been with us and how you're present with us right now. We pray for our community. We pray for our congregation here. We pray for those that are hurting inside this congregation, either physical hurts or spiritual hurts. We pray for healing and for those that have been hurt in our community and, and have wounds that need to be healed. I pray for healing for them. Thank you for those in our community who are willing to lead. And I pray that you would bless them for their work. Help us to live in Culver in a way that honors you and this, help the surrounding community to, to live in a way that pleases you and is good for us. We pray for our uh, county commissioners and anyone else that's in leadership in the county. We pray that you would bless them and guide them that they might lead us in a way that honors you and for our state and federal governments, that they might uh, follow you and that they might listen to you and that you might speak to them. And they might um, make laws that are in accordance with your laws and then lead us in the right way. We pray for those who are protecting us. For the military, we pray that you bless them and their families, keep everybody safe, everybody healthy. For those that are protecting our borders, we pray that you bless them and Keep them safe and guide them 
during these difficult times. For those who protect us locally, for the law enforcement, for the fire departments, for the EMTs, for those who work on our utilities, for those that take care of issues we don't even know we have and protect us, for those who protect our the internet, uh, for instance. I don't know anyone who does that, but yet there are those who are trying to protect us in that way. Pray that you would bless all of those and keep them safe and keep them healthy. We pray for those who are raising our crops um, and raising all, our, all of our food for the farmers and ranchers and others who somehow get food to us, for those that transport it to our communities. We pray that you bless those people, keep them all safe and healthy, help them to earn a good living in what they do and to stay safe. We pray for those who are teaching in our schools. We pray that you bless them during these times and especially as spring is around the corner, sometimes it becomes difficult to get the kids to focus. I pray that you bless them and help them to be able to do what is right in your eyes and deal with the many complications they face. We pray for the students, that you would bless them and guide them during these, during these days, but also as they uh, gather their education that they might learn everything they need to learn to be successful. And we pray for anyone in the school that helps them out in this way. I pray that you would bless them and uh, bless especially those who are guiding our schools and the school boards and administration. We pray for those who are in the hospitals, for the patients. We pray for healing and comfort and peace. For those who are working there to bring this about, I pray that you would bless them for their work, provide for all the staff needs they have, keep them safe and healthy, and help them to be able to uh, navigate through the many regulations that they face each day. We pray for our missionaries. We pray that you would bless them for their work, keep them safe and healthy, and provide for their needs. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith, especially those that may be in prison because of their faith in Jesus Christ. We pray that you would bless them, provide for them, provide for their families, help them to win over some of their persecutors. We pray for those in our nation who are incarcerated. We pray that you would bless them and speak to them. We pray that they might be reconciled with you and with their families and with their communities. And that you would send workers to, to get the word out to them because they need to hear your good word. Now we would pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we'll receive your offering.
Father, we thank you for each penny that was placed in these offerings. We pray that you would bless it now and bless our community. And we pray that you would bless the giver and the gift. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you be seated? You know, when you hear the gospel reading, So 
exercise does us some good. I mean, every doctor would say that it helps solve a lot of our health problem, problems if we exercise daily and we find a way to do it. And during Lent, we exercise especially spiritually if we haven't been um, doing it, we, we need to get started. Some of us are disciplined during the whole year and you don't need um, a reminder. But some of us do, and Lent offers a reminder that we should allow God to examine us. Now, how many of you like exams? Of any kind. Either the doctors or the school kind. Most of us don't. But yet they reveal what needs to be done. Um, if they're used correctly, they can show for kids deficit if they're not used for the wrong reason. There are areas where we can correct. And so it is when we face trials. It shows areas where we need to be strengthened or corrected. And so when we study the Bible, it, it does that for us, doesn't it? It shows areas, as painful as it is, as if we allow the Scripture to examine us, it makes us better. Just like when we have an exam at the doctor's office, or an exam at college or on the grade school level, it shows us areas we should be working on. Well, Jesus is in a unique, situ a unique position in that he is man and God and had no sin. So we wonder why was he tempted? I mean, if he's already perfect, why does he need to be tempted? And why does he need to have trials? But yet we read in Hebrews that even Jesus was tried, and, and it's hard to understand the exact language of this, but made it perfect through his trials. So even Jesus was strengthened as he was tried. Now many of us have faced trials this year that almost are beyond what we can bear. And we think, why do I have to put up with this? Why do I have to put up with sickness? Why do I have to put up with the trials? Part of it is we live in a fallen world. That there are trials that just come whether we're good or bad. It isn't necessarily uh, judgment because we're bad. Most of the time, it's just things that happen, but sometimes it's specifically allowed by God to strengthen us and to help us reflect on the things that we need, to help us to exercise our faith. And so during Lent, we should do the, the walk if we are not doing it right now. Read the scriptures each day. Remember when Jesus was tempted, he knew the scriptures. It wasn't like, oh, I better go look in my Bible how to reply to Satan. Now, in those days, their Bible was just the Hebrew Old Testament. And it had been translated to Greek, so it was handy for, the, for everyone living in the empire at that time that understood Greek um, to have the, the scriptures at hand. But he knew the scriptures. He didn't have to go look them up. So each day we should go through the Bible because we never know what we're going to need. Now, the daily breads are great because, and I hope you're using something like that because it also has the scriptures in it if you want to know the scriptures. But most of us find that if we're not careful, we can be too busy to look at scriptures. Most of us, if we need to exercise, can find we're too busy to exercise for medical reasons. It's always, it was always a, uh, a joke when they would, they would show it on in the magazines of a doctor that was smoking and overweight would tell his patient, you ought to stop smoking and lose some weight. Because if the doctor isn't doing it, <coughs> Why should I? He gave us an excuse, even though we know what he's saying is good for us. Well, Jesus is in a unique situation, is that he wasn't someone that had deficits like that doctor that was in the comics. 
He is someone who is perfect, but yet he took our sin upon him so that we might be healed. And that isn't just so we can get to heaven. Some people uh, do things or go to church because they think, well, maybe if I do enough stuff, I can get to heaven to make up for my sins. But that is not really what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches us that we're all sinners, and there's no way that we can, on our own, make it. The Bible teaches us that Jesus became sin for us, he who is perfect, so that if we receive that, then we get that perfection. Uh, as, as Janet read, that we are justified before God, not because we're just people, but because Jesus took on the sins of the world and also made us holy in God's eyes because of the shedding of his blood. So we have this gift from God that we can receive and apply. But it's not just salvation so that we can get into heaven. It is something that makes us feel better. And as you grow in your spiritual faith, it makes us feel better. Now Jesus fasted for 40 days. And there are some people in uh, during Lent that do various kinds of fasts. I don't know if you do, but some people give up things. Some, some people give up um, chocolate. Some people give up things they don't want to do anyway. Um, some people give up uh, food, they'll actually give up meat and they'll just live um, on, on bread and water um, during this time. I accidentally, when I was talking with Gail, was talking about what I give up, and I had a slip of the tongue and I said, I, I don't eat lint. <laughs> I meant to say I don't eat, you know, some people don't eat during Lent, but somehow it slipped out I don't eat Lent during Lent. <laughs> that would be easy for me to give up. Yeah. But as a kid, you know, that's what I thought it was, Lent. Maybe some of you love the same thing. So spiritual exercise, Jesus did that, and he was ready when the, the trial comes. Um, for those who train for races um, or plan for exams, you're much better off if you prepare a little bit ahead of time. Some of us, when we prepare for exams, try to cram. Um, if we're going to the, for example, if we're going to go in for an exam for the dentist, we try to clean our teeth really good and eat right for a week before so that we don't have to be drilled upon. Some of us, before we go to the doctor, uh, may try to, to do some things, get our, our, our blood pressure down and exercise before we go to the doctor so the exam doesn't make us look so bad. I remember before races, uh, you know, if I would have really tried, I could have warmed up and gotten to where I could race and, uh, and, and do well, but I really didn't have that kind of self-discipline. Now, when I was in high school, in junior high, our coaches made sure that we were ready for a game. We kind of resented the practices. We resented the wind sprints. You remember having to exercise if you were in school, kind of resenting those exercises because I really don't feel like doing this. In fact, well, that's one of the areas when my daughter got, she wasn't really an exerciser, but when she started exercising and started competing, she really loved it. And so she loved PD, but she said some of the girls in her class would just sit up there and do their homework. They just hated PD so much. But we don't really want to exercise. But if we get to a ball game and we're not, we haven't practiced, we haven't done drills, we haven't done those wind sprints, by the time we get to the last part of the game, what happens? We have no strength and we lose. Now for people in our age group, they said walking, moderate walking is one of the best exercises. It doesn't mess up our knees, doesn't 
um, cause the necessary strain, and especially if we do it on soft ground. Because I guess concrete and hard surfaces are hard for our joints. Boy, my joints hurt every once in a while now. Uh, sometimes more than once in a while. But so if you walk and keep active, it actually helps your joints. If you don't uh, exercise, it doesn't get the nourishment to your joints as you need, and so it gets worse. That's why uh, Gail said one of the doctors at Minneapolis used to say, a body of motion stays in motion. A body at rest stays at rest. And that's the way it is with us spiritually. If we don't exercise, first of all, we won't feel good spiritually. If we don't exercise our faith, we don't read the scriptures, we don't pray, don't spend time with God. But the other thing is that when the trial comes, we won't be ready. And we'll be in worse shape. So during this Lent, whether you fast or not, if it's helpful for you to fast, whether you give up things or not, the most important thing is that you spend time with God daily. Now maybe it's not always with scriptures, but wake up with talking to God, go to bed, talking to God, and in between, as time permits, talk to God. Don't have to have a special place, don't have to have a special book, don't have to wear a special outfit. You just have to be open and give up some of your busyness for a minute and talk to God. So let's practice during this time Lent, of Lent some self-discipline and talk to God. Read the scriptures. Spend some time in that daily bread if you don't have the devotional. But spend time building up your spiritual faith. So like Jesus, when Jesus was trial, of course that was a marathon of marathons of spiritual trials. But when you are tried, you'll be found ready and strong to be able to take what the devil dishes out to us. Because the devil dishes out a lot of stuff to us in this world. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and we'll uh, go to our closing hymn. It's found in um, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. And maybe you'll play some lips for me. I thought it was a puppet You did. I thought I heard that somewhere. I was going to pick it I tried to, I, usually I don't tell her what I want to for music because she's so much better. But I wanted he lives, he walked with me and talked with me. And she played it during the offering. So uh, walk with God and talk with him. Now, every time you feel the spirit, you'll feel it more if we are disciplined and spend time with him. 404. <laughs>
May the love of God the Father, may the power of the Holy Spirit, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with us now and forevermore, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.